Okay, here we're going to look at different carbon fixation pathways for what's called C3, C4, and CAM plants. For the most part, we've been talking about photosynthesis and relating it to C3 plants. There's actually two other pathways that go through. However, please realize each uses carbon dioxide, and ultimately all three of these produce glucose. It's how they go about doing this that's different. The, what I've been talking about so far is a C3 plant, and that's the most simplest of forms. C4 plants use the basophil to have a 4-carbon intermediate, and then the Calvin cycle actually occurs in the bundle sheath cells. CAM plants have a day-night cycle to be able to compare the two. So these are just things to keep in mind uh, as we go through and compare them. So just giving you a little bit of orientation, the mesophyll, Maybe remember this from the cross section of the leaf. This compromises the bulk of internal leaf tissue and the majority site of the photosynthetic process in plants since they contain large amounts of chloroplast. The inner tissue parenchyma of a leaf containing many chloroplasts is located right here. Bundle sheath cells, you can see here, layer of cells and leaves and stems that surround vascular bundles. Remember, our vascular bundles here are xylem and phloem. In C4 plants, the bundle sheath cells contain chloroplasts and are the site of, site of the Kelvin cycle. So again, be able to compare C3, C4, and also CAM plants here. Just give me the example of each. C3 is most plants, and they follow the steps presented as what we call normal. And it's located right here. The Kelvin cycle occurs in the mesophyll, then occurs its CO2 directly and produces glucose. C4 plants, carbon dioxide is incorporated into a 4-carbon compound in the mesophyll and the Calvin cycle occurs in the bundle sheath cell. In the CAM pathway, carbon dioxide is actually stored as an acid at night and then is fed through the Calvin cycle during the day. And again, the Calvin cycle here is occurring in the mesophyll. To give you an idea of what these plants may connect to, C3 plants would be an example of a tomato plant, C4 plants would be like corn, and CAM plants would be a cactus. So C3 plants, common plant type of the Calvin cycle binding carbon dioxide to the rubisco enzyme, most efficient during cool and moist conditions with normal light. This is compared to C4 and CAM plants. Most plants live in cool, moist conditions with normal light. This is why most plants are C3 plants. Here's just a couple examples, typical garden plants. Um, here we got a field of crops, all C3 plants. C4 now is where we're starting to differ. C4 plants have an intermediate before carbon dioxide binds to the rubisco, which benefits the plants in hotter climates. Corn, sugarcane, and crabgrass are examples of C4 plants. Stomata are still open during the day, which is an important step, which is different than a camp plant. Notice those intermediates oxaloacetate and malate. I try to highlight here in little uh, blue circles. This is an intermediate step before carbon dioxide binds with the rubisco. This intermediate before it goes through that process. See here, carbon dioxide incorporated into a four carbon compound, oxyl acetate here, four carbon sugar, I'm sorry, four carbon compound here, in order to make ultimately our sugars. Carbon dioxide is shelled via malate or aspartate from the mesophyll cells to the bundle sheath cells. In these bundle sheath cells, carbon dioxide is released by decarboxylation of malate. So what does all this mean? We have our carbon dioxide coming in. We have this kind of intermediate that's occurring. Remember, if you remember from our regular photosynthetic process, instead of the three carbon PGA compound in C3 plants, we're using this acid as an intermediate to bind. Ultimately, this um, four carbon compound, so it's gonna feed the carbon from the carbon dioxide into the Calvin cycle. Now the Calvin cycle doesn't change, it's the same, it's just the preparation these plants go through to be able to deliver that carbon has this intermediate step. With high light and temperature, C4 plants can photosynthesize faster than C3 plants. C4 plants have better water use efficiency because the use of the PEP carboxylase brings carbon dioxide in faster and can keep the stomata closed longer. So this is the advantage to the four carbon intermediate, is that in high light and water stress conditions, C4 plants can take up carbon dioxide more efficiently. They're also better in high light, and again, these temperature conditions, because they're able to 
keep the stomata closed longer, eliminating water loss. And corn plants would be this example, versus our C3 plants, which would be, in this case, an elm tree here. We have this direct binding of carbon dioxide in the mesophyll cells and close the stomata, and then the carbon dioxide can essentially, we'll say, be processed before entering the Calvin cycle. Here's just a comparison of C3 plants at low light and at high light and the rate of photosynthesis. We notice that the carbon dioxide concentration, though, differs between our C4 plants. Even at almost no carbon dioxide, the rate of carbon dioxide uptake is greater in C4 plants, simply because they're slightly more efficient at it and keep their stomata closed longer. CAM plants, or crassulation acid metabolism. Succulents and cacti are examples, commonly found in very hot, dry areas such as the deserts. In these plants, carbon dioxide is stored in the form of an acid before the photosynthetic process can occur. The stomata are open at night, and the question is, well, what's the advantage of opening stomata at night? Why don't they do it during the day like just about all the other plants? And there's a specific reason for that. Because they're in such hot and dry environments, the water loss would be too great. Opening stomata at night, allowing CO2 to come in, eliminates lots of water loss. But keep in mind that we need light to form the photosynthetic process, so this creates a challenge in plants. Sticking with those cam plants, day versus night, you see there's definitely differences between the two. Here's our day, we notice our stomata are closed. Here during night it is open, because it's allowing carbon dioxide to come in, but water vapor is also leaving. But because it's at night, not a lot of hot and sunlight intensity, the amount of water lost is definitely reduced. But they need to have steps in place to be able to utilize that CO2 to be able to use in the light reaction. To give you a little bit of an idea, at night evaporation rates are typically lower, reducing water loss. Carbon dioxide is converted to an acid, and that's the key part here, our, our malate acid, before being used in the light dependent reaction. In camp plants during the day, the acid is broken down and the CO2 is released into probisco for the photosynthetic process to occur. Simply put, that stomata is opening, carbon dioxide is coming in, that carbon is being stored as an acid. Then during the day, the stomata are closed, and this acid now is being fed into the light dependent reaction, and that carbon dioxide is being released, and the normal C3 plant photosynthetic process occurs, but the stomata remain closed that carbon dioxide is being released from the acid, and that closed stomata during the day eliminates the water loss of the plant. In general summary, carbon dioxide stored as a forward carbon acid malate in vacuoles at night. During the daytime, the malate is transported to chloroplast, where it's converted back to carbon dioxide, which is then used for the photosynthetic process. The pre-collected carbon dioxide is concentrated around the enzyme probisco, increasing photosynthetic efficiency. And that's what we see here. Here's our day, here's our night cycle. At night, our carbon dioxide is coming in. We're storing it as an acid in the vacuole. Then during the day, we're releasing that acid. We're breaking apart the CO2, running it through the Calvin cycle to generate our sugars in this case. And remember, this occurs with plants in extremely dry and arid conditions like these cactus here.